Oh wow. Do I look as tired as I am? Yes, I do. Well, that's what you get when you have to get up before your kids to make a video because everyone's at home. <laughs> Hardcore YouTuber mom life. Hey Rabbits, it's Trixie and I would say that more proudly on other days, but this is my head. Wow, your videos are getting more and more insightful. Come on, it's five o'clock in the morning, just go back to bed and give me a break. What I mean is all my imagination, every idea I ever had for a new video or a cool creative project came from here. And I'm sure that you guys out there have amazing heads with colorful thoughts as well. So why don't we give this oval skull and meatball sitting on our necks some credit today for carrying our brain around, which is the most fascinating organ because it defines who we are. Let's dedicate a video to our heads and the various funny names Germans have for them. The head is der Kopf in German. That doesn't sound too fancy, but it's interesting to look at this word's origin. Kopf derives from the old High German word Schopf. <laughs> when I tried to research how to pronounce that, Google just asked me, did you mean Schopfsui? So uh, yeah, we're gonna have to guess how to say that. But what is more important anyway is its meaning, which is brain case, bowl or cup. So when I described the head as a brain container in the beginning, that's pretty much exactly what the word Kopf stands for. Apart from that, Kopf has some additional meanings. Wanna know the funniest one? It can be a unit for lattice and cabbage. Lattice. <laughs> hey Gladys, bring me the lattice. At least the kind that is round-ish and sort of shaped like a head. Ein Kopf Eisberg Salat. Literally, a head of iceberg lettuce. Uh, Schatz, gleich beim Einkaufen, vergiss bitte nicht wieder den Kopfsalat. Sonst mache ich dich einen kürzer. Ach so, und natürlich Eier für die Plätzchen zum Nachtisch. Same as the word head in English, Kopf can also be used to refer to the top part of something. For example, the leader of a company is der Kopf des Unternehmens. The head of a nail is der Nagelkopf. The header of a page is die Kopfzeile and so on. So to sum it up, if you hear Kopf in German, it's either the head that you carry on your neck, the top of something or cabbage. But since the German language is so creative and diverse, Kopf is by far not the only term you can refer to your head with. Funnily enough, I found just a few rather neutral words for it and a lot of funny and silly ones. So the head seems to be a thing that Germans like to ridicule or joke about. Or in other words, we like to subtly call somebody stupid by giving their heads funny names. I don't know what that teaches you about us Germans, you draw your own conclusions. Now before we talk about all the hilarious nicknames for heads, let's take a look at the more or less neutral ones, one of which is das Haupt. This literally means the main, major or prime. For example, a common German exclamation is Asche auf mein Haupt, ashes to my head. We use that to admit that something was our fault and we feel bad about it. Similar to sorry, mea culpa. And in general, I like the term Haupt because it implies that the head or the brain has this prime role. It emphasizes its importance and power. I mean, when it comes to decisions, its only competitors are the heart, the stomach or the penis. The next one is Schädel, which is the German name for the skull. Well, kind of makes sense as a nickname, right? It's not entirely neutral though, as Schädel is usually used in a more derogatory way. Since it refers to the bone only and not the brain inside, it often implies stupidity. Or let's say that someone depends more on physical strength and muscles rather than their brain and mind. Like imagine the typical cartoon situation in which a character is told to solve a problem, like opening a door by using their head. And instead of thinking smartly or trying to find a key or another way inside, they just take a run up and bust the door open with their heads, like an angry ram. <laughs> She was right. I should be sleeping. Then there is das Oberstübchen. 
literally meaning the small upper living room. And if that doesn't make your linguistic cutometer go ding 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 ding, then your linguistic cutometer is seriously broken. I think Oberstübchen is one of the most adorable creative words the German language has to offer. It's like our body is a house with lots of different rooms and departments. And the brain sits in this cozy living room which is the head, drinking coffee while reading the newspaper, observing everyone and everything from above and giving orders. It makes sense to picture the head as the control panel of our body, so why not in the style of a cozy living room. As the ultimate couch potato myself, I'm sure my brain also prefers a comfortable furnishing style up there. Another term for the head, or again more like the brain, is die Denkmaschine or der Denkapparat. The thinking machine or thinking device, apparatus. Which are suitable names as well, I guess, but a bit too technical for my liking. Of course, thoughts and ideas are basically processed data similar to what a computer does. But the brain also controls our emotions, our personality and our conscience. And isn't that what makes us different from a robot or from a machine? Now the moment we've all waited for. Time to present the funny and silly names that Germans have for their heads. As I said, their main purpose is to make fun of others, so think twice before you use them. They're not simply a synonym for Kopf, more like slight insults, and you may hurt somebody's feelings. In addition to that, it is possible to use these words in a random context, but most often Germans do so in connection with a threat of violence, be it meant in a literal, figurative or joking way. Since Kopf basically means brain container or brain bowl, it doesn't come as a surprise that Germans also sometimes refer to the head as der Decke, the lid. Jetzt hör auf damit oder du kriegst was auf den Deckel! Danke. As you can see, jemandem eins auf den Deckel geben, to hit somebody's head. The only time Deckel refers to the human head is in this aggressive context. Then there are some dialect words, such as the Low German Dudes or Deeds. Das ist sehr wichtig, Schüler. Ich sag's euch, hämmert euch das in den Dudes. Ey, das ist meine Pizza. Finger weg, oder willst du das auf den Deeds? Another one is the Saxon Nischel. Or to say it properly, the nuzzle, du bist your blade, the dude am ja the nuzzle way. The nickname for the head that I personally like the most is the mumme, the marble. You know these small, colorful balls with pretty patterns made out of glass. I used to collect them as a kid, and now my own children also play with them. As a nickname for the head, their size may not be that accurate. But then again, the head is also a round, hard, and precious object, so it's not that far fetched either. I mean, have you ever looked at testicles? If it's okay to call that crown jewels, then this can as well be a marble, all right? Ah, tut mir die Murmel weh. Bestimmt waren die Eier schlecht, mit denen ich die Rattengift als Seenplätzchen gebacken habe. The last four words have one thing in common. The things they describe are all edible. Let's start with die Nuss, the nut. And now I'm thinking of testicles again, even though I don't want to. Nuss. I know, but don't judge too quickly. I think that's a pretty awesome and fitting nickname for the head. You see, the nut shell resembles the hard skull. And don't tell me a walnut doesn't at least somewhat look like a tiny version of a brain. Or simply like your brain. Hui, jetzt hast du mir aber eins auf die Nuss gegeben. Next up, der Kürbis, the pumpkin. I haven't heard that one too much, but I guess it makes sense for people with a big head or an orange head. But who would that be? I mean. I cannot think of any Trump, uh, anyone. So what about the Rübe instead? The turnip? Hmm, let me think about it. Yeah, looking at this picture, I can see where that's coming from. Round shape, the leaves resembling hair, the root may be a fancy goatee. So if you feel overwhelmed by the number of German words for the human head, then you can choose to say, oh, all diese Wörter, wie soll ich die nur meine Rübe kriegen? Mann, mir tut echt langsam die Birne weh. Aha leading me to the last term, which is die Birne, the pear. The word doesn't refer to the fruit though, but to die Glühbirne, the light bulb. You may know it from cartoons or comics. Whenever a character has a good idea, a light bulb appears, indicating a mental breakthrough. Funnily enough, when you are, for example, hungover or sick, as I was the last 
two weeks. <coughs> <coughs> you can call your head the Matschbirne, with much meaning mud or dirt. You feel like your brain is mush and you need to sleep and rest and recover before ding 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 good ideas can be born again. All right, rabbits, I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new. Stay safe during these scary times and use your head to take care of yourself and protect others. Let's get through this together. And in case you wonder why I didn't speak about the obvious, I don't think we really need another YouTuber addressing this topic. What we need instead is distraction. So without downplaying the situation, I'm going to focus on that and leave the rest to the experts. These were a lot of German words for the head. Subscribe to Don't Trust the Rabbit for more videos like this one and if you want to support my channel even a bit more then you can also find me on Patreon. I would really appreciate your help. Make the best out of this day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!